Hi folks. So I just want to take a moment to discuss a few of the things that were brought up in this week's PowerPoint. Now I know that this subject of police brutality and police corruption uh, can be difficult to think about. and It is often hard to believe that police officers can make mistakes, but they do. It is our job as scholars and as citizens of the world to learn from these mistakes and advocate for change. That's the goal here. I am not trying to make anyone angry at the police of at police officers or claim that they are bad people. I just want you all to see all of the aspects of the criminal justice system. The good, the bad, and the ugly. While most police officers are good at their job, particularly when it comes to diffusing situations, some police officers are not. Uh, most of the time, it is due to their poor training, and unclear policies within police departments. And remember, police departments have different policies. They set their own, so it's not universal across the country. Um. <clears throat> uh, so in this PowerPoint, you watched a few videos that showed examples of policing gone wrong. In the case of the Rodney King beating, many people suggest that the video uh, of the beating was edited to make it look worse than it actually was. So I suggest that you guys find the full video, which is on YouTube, and make up your own mind about it. Another good resource is the film LA Riots Revisited, which tells a more complete story of the beating and the riots that occurred after the officers were committed, acquitted, and what happened in LA in the years after the riots. You will notice some very clear parallels to what has been happening in Ferguson, Missouri over the last several months. Another difficult topic discussed in the PowerPoint is that of torture. I briefly bought, brought up the UN Convention on Torture um, with the idea that I would discuss it in this video. It's important to understand the framing of this definition of torture and that it is also applied to police interrogations. Meaning that here in the West, we use this definition to admonish other policing agencies throughout the world, agencies that routinely torture to gain confessions. This is something that we also have a long history of doing here in the US. And most police officers do a good job of interrogating but there are many who use fairly brutal methods to get confessions, including sensory deprivation. When I've taught this class in the past, I've always had a few students who defend the use of torture, particularly when it comes to uh, enemy combatants or terrorists. Some people justify it on the grounds that the enemy is going to torture our soldiers and citizens, so why not torture theirs? Others justify it because it can provide intelligence that may save soldiers and citizens' lives. And some even justify it because they just don't care. Here's the deal. Torture has proven over and over again to be an ineffective method of interrogation. It has led to more false confessions, erroneous intelligence, and false arrests than any other form of interrogation. When someone is afraid for their life, or they're being hurt, whether it's physically or mentally, they will say anything to make it stop. Another thing to remember about torture is that when we use it, we are degrading ourselves as a society. We are putting ourselves at the same level as those people and countries that we admonish for their human rights violations. I want you all to take a second and I want you to think about this following scenario. Okay. There was once a prisoner of war who kept trying to escape. Every time he did, his captors would catch him. They would torture him in front of the other prisoners as a lesson to keep the others in line. During one of his failed escape tents, he broke his foot, jumping off the roof. His captors refused him medical attention for it. They figured it would keep him from escaping again, and he would limp for the rest of his life. Now I want you to take a moment and think about this. As a soldier, in a time of war, 
Was his torture justified? That's my cat. Um, what if I told you he was an American soldier? And his captors were Nazis. What if I told you this was true? And that he was my grandfather? Can you still justify his torture? <laughs> I can tell you exp from experience that torture is a lifelong punishment. And it affects entire families. My grandfather was a good man. And he went on to become a police officer, a sheriff, and eventually the chief of police. But he never once talked about the war. We learned about what was done to him at his funeral. One of his men, who was a POW with him, told us what he could remember seeing. I want you all to think about these things and decide for yourself what you want to believe. My goal here in with telling you this story about my grandfather is so that you can see all the sides of the story. I know this is a difficult topic, and I thank you for listening to me. So next week, we're going to be watching a video that will tie into this chapter, the PowerPoint, and this video. So I want you to be prepared to contemplate some more difficult topics. And thank you guys.